this week, the United Nations scientists there have recommended that the Great Barrier Reef be added to their in danger list. It comes as the reef achieved record coral coverage this year. However, the United Nations remains intent on pushing the narrative that it's on the brink of collapse. Now, Minister for the Environment Tanya Plibersek, whose government used climate scaremongering as an election tactic, has changed her tune, begging the United Nations not to single out the reef. Physicist, marine physicist Peter Ridd joins us now to discuss the lunacy from Townsville. Always great to see you, Peter. Um, so, uh, as you've pointed out, and we've had you on the show many times pointing out, there are very good, thing, good news to be told about what is happening with the Great Barrier Reef. The United Nations clearly don't watch our program and they don't listen to you. So what is going on? Who are they getting their advice from? Well, they're getting their advice from the CSIRO and the Australian Institute of Marine Science and the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority, all of which do say the Great Barrier Reef is in danger. I mean, this is the problem. Our own science institutions are white-anting the country. And I think it's really quite amusing that poor old Tanya Plibersek is actually now going to go against her scientific advice from her organisations and try to argue quite correctly that, no, the reef is not in danger. We've got record high coral cover. We've been proven that these institutions have essentially got it totally wrong. They said that we'd have four massive bleaching events where we lost 93% and 50% and various other percentage of coral in the last few years. And now we've got record high coral cover. Now, Rita? is there any danger that the scientists who keep getting these predictions spectacularly wrong, whether they're from the CSIRO or other government-funded bodies, is there any accountability? Can Tanya Plibersek go back to them and say, you're causing potential harm to the country if the UN uh, puts us on this endangered list and, and you're government-funded, you should be accountable? Exactly. How do you feel if you're a, a Great Barrier Reef tourist operator and you have this news coming out that your attraction is now being regarded as endangered? And yes, Tanya Plebiscit should. Uh, you know, they're going to spend a few billion dollars on the reef. How about a couple of million dollars just to check the science? I mean, the scale of their error is huge. Remember that they said that, you know, up to 50% of the coral had been bleached uh, and killed. Now, the reef is as big as Victoria, as big as Germany. But clearly, not that much coral died. You know, the scale of their error is sort of like as big as Belgium. That's how big their <laughs> error is. But there is, there is no accountability. They can get away with this. Nobody says, what the hell did you do wrong here? But why are they such catastrophists? Why have we got these bodies that want there to be a catastrophic problem with the reef? There are many reasons. The first is that, yes, sometimes a lot of coral does die. And a lot of these scientists are, are emotional about it. They get an emotional response and they overreact. There are people higher up in the institutions who've got a vested interest for their institution to catastrophize about it. But there are other scientists who enjoy the power. They have incredible power. I mean, even in, in this latest report, they're saying we've got to stop all dam constructions on the coast of Jason. Now, I've got lots of problems with dams, but, you know, they're not affecting the Great Barrier Reef. But because they use the Great Barrier Reef to, to exercise their power, I think they get a bit of a kick out of it on occasions. James. So tell me, though, you know, they say, oh, the coral reef is dying, it's all a disaster and everything like that. But what is the state of the coral reef in, uh, off Queensland versus other major reefs around the world? And how does this play into the government's and Tony Plibersek's strategy for trying to turn this around? Well, I think Tanya Plebisek has made a valid point, a totally valid point, that if you're going to declare the Great Barrier Reef is endangered, you've got to declare all of the reefs of the whole world is endangered. I mean, that, that's wrong. Um, but, you know, the Great Barrier Reef is by far the best, most pristine, the biggest, the most beautiful reef in the whole wide world. And this just shows the moral corruption that's happened in the scientific fraternity, that they're picking on the Great Barrier Reef for goodness sake. Um, Peter, you live up in Townsville and you do a lot of great work up there. 
um, both in the water and on the land. Um, but doesn't this sort of thing seriously jeopardise tourism and one of the great industries of Queensland? So many people that I know you know and, and work with, their livelihood depends on those international tourists. They're not going to come if the UN keeps telling them the thing is dying or dead. Well, this is exactly the problem. And, I mean, it's interesting that a lot of the tourists who do come and expect to see the river in a terrible shape, they, you know, almost to a, a man, they say, good grief, the reef looks really good. It's not nothing like what we were told. <laughs> yes. And, um, and, and this, is the, this is the trouble. That, um, it would be like the British saying, don't come to London because Buckingham Palace is falling down and, you know, Big Ben is a, a load of rubbish. This is what we're doing to our premier tourist attraction, not just for North Queensland, but actually for Australia. The mm. Great Barrier Reef mm. is the one thing that people come to Australia for. You won't see it anywhere else. Rita? Well, I just, again, I'm interested in Tanya Plibersek's U-turn here because yeah, she was with the catastrophes in opposition, but now that she's in government, she sees the, the value of this asset and not... Uh, lying about the state it's in to the world. So what can she do? Can she have this, uh, the Barrier Reef not listed as endangered or is it beyond her powers to influence this decision? She, she can do nothing about that. But what she can do is have an inquiry into the science. In Queensland, we've had this massive inquiry into our hugely failed forensic laboratory that couldn't even find DNA in a pool of blood. <laughs> now we have we have that, that's what they, you know that's actually true right yeah. but but the scale of the great barrier reef science is, is even the, the problem there is even worse as i said you know they said the reef had died four times in the last six years and we had record high coral cover this is proof that we need an inquiry into great barrier reef science to see where on earth they have gone wrong and what is going on in those institutions Peter Ridd, couldn't agree with you more. Let's get on. Tanya Plibersek, let's get that inquiry into the mismanagement of science up there with the Great Barrier Reef because it is self-evidently desperately needed.